Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with fabulous concert programs number 37, which is number three in our cycle of symphonies by French composer Albert Magnard, genius symphonist, a wonderful composer that no one pays attention to. And he wrote his third symphony around, well, it was in the first decade or so of the of the 19th century. It's a symphony in the tradition of César Franck and Ernest Chausson and Vincent Dandy and that, that crew in cyclical form, but it's bigger and it has four movements and it's somewhat more classicizing. I mean, he knew his Brahms, but it's, it's original. At this point in his career, Magnard had really broken through as a composer, as a personal creative voice. It begins with a gorgeous modal chorale. It sounds almost like Debussy's The Engulfed Cathedral, if you know that, the piano prelude, which was orchestrated by Stokowski and others. And it is a glorious, glorious motto theme that's going to return at the end of the symphony. It's really a stunning piece of music. Ernest Ansermet recorded it for Decca. It was, I think, his last major recording or one of them. Um, and it, that was all. I mean, no one heard anything of it for the next mm, 40 years or so, or 30 years, until until Michel Plasson and some other compo- conductors began to do Magnard symphonies in in exploring the the you know crypt of buried French treasures, and this is a treasure. So it has to be the the culminating work. Um, in the concert, and, it, and it, it really is. But I have a program, it's one of my typical programs of four works, introduction, major work, introduction, major work. That's sort of how I've been doing these because I just think we need to put more really good music you know, into these programs because you can do them at home, but also in real life, in real concerts. I mean, the old you know, overture, concerto, intermission, symphony, you can do so much more if you just add one more short work. You can do more with programming, with with thematic things, with you know all kinds of stuff. And this is one of those. So for the first half, we have Mendelssohn's Trumpet Overture. I love Mendelssohn's Trumpet Overture. I don't know why they call it that. It doesn't have anything special with trumpets. I mean, it doesn't. It, 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 I mean, they have trumpet. It has trumpets in it. But they don't do anything unusual. It's really a fascinating excuse me, it's really a fascinating piece, a lovely piece. I mean, and, and it's got really catchy tunes and it's full of energy and I just love the thing. And it's in monothematics and not a form. Yay! And it has three drum tuning for the timpani, which was quite unusual for its day. It's an actually rather innovative piece. And Mendelssohn never published it, and it, like most of his music. And it deserves to be hauled out once in a while instead of just, you know, the Hebrides or a Midsummer Night's Dream or any of that stuff. It's beautiful work. So let's start with that. It'll surprise people with how lively and delightful it is. Then the concerto-like object. In this case, I want to do Richard Strauss's Burlesca because I've never seen it. And I've, you know, I'm not going to see it now. I'm just going to play it. But it's a brilliant piece. It's one of the most difficult pieces in the entire repertoire. It's about 20 minutes long. It's a little short for a concerto, but I have a solution for that. It begins with a timpani solo from four drums, and it's funny. I mean, it's a burlesque. It's actually funny. If you listen to it carefully, it's really quite a wacky little thing, and it's really his first mature masterpiece. Um, it deserves to be far more um, lauded than it normally is. And, and and it's in the repertoire of people like Martha Argerich. I mean, so she'll come and play it. I mean, it won't be a problem. You know, we'll just drag her over and sit her down and she'll do it. And so that's the first half. And it's a short first half, actually, because the overture is like nine minutes or so and, and the burlesque is like 20. So it's a good half hour of music, a half hour. Then we have intermission. And when we come back, ooh, this is where the fun begins because there's more piano and orchestra stuff. Liszt's Totentanz. Variations on the DS era. Do, 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 you know, that. And it begins with like pounding timpani. It's thrilling. It's a thrilling piece of music. Again, it's 16 minutes long, 14 minutes long. If it gets played, it's too short. So you'll never hear it in real life, or almost never. And I want to hear it. So it makes a wonderful introduction to the main event 
which is the Maynard Third Symphony, and which is about, you know, it's in normal symphonic length. It's about, what, 35, 40 minutes, somewhere in there. It's just beautiful. It's a fabulously exciting program. And it, it offers the soloist a lot of star, you know, stuff to do. You can get a really good pianist to do it. I think that it will it will attract an audience because you've got Mendelssohn and Strauss and, you know, Liszt. I mean, people who, you know, audiences tend to enjoy, at least live. And then this wonderful special feature, the special symphony to wrap things up. I think that's really a fun way to showcase not only an unusual programming concept and some lesser heard concertante works, but then the Magnard Third Symphony, which is a masterpiece. And everyone will go home incredibly happy. Or you'll just go to sleep when you're done listening one evening or whatever. But it's, it's great stuff. Absolutely great stuff. So keep on listening, friends. Thank you so much for joining me. Take care.